Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, you may be seated. Welcome to Bible study tonight. <clears throat> If you have your Bibles uh, with you, go with me to the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 through 13. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Tonight, I want to reinvestigate this uh, issue of the word of faith. And I want us to look at it very, very carefully so that we don't miss out on what I believe God wants us to really get a hold of as far as living it out in our lives. Verse 11, he says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, uh, teaching us. So grace will teach you. Grace teaches us that denying or refusing ungodliness, and that's an individual who has no regard for God, whether he is saved or unsaved, to live a life with no regard for God is ungodliness. And worldly lust, he says, we should live soberly, righteously, but then he says we should live godly. Now, godliness is all about complete dependence upon God. Complete and total dependence upon God. The obedience to the faith is all about a daily relying upon Jesus. I never knew and understood how that message was just being reinforced over and over in the Word of God. Un until we did this. We've been talking about grace for what, six months now? Well, almost six months. And I'm telling you, it's, it's all about getting our attention and getting us to make a decision of quality to live a life where we are completely dependent upon God and that we daily rely upon God. And so uh, in doing this, I think Sunday I mentioned the fact that uh, the teachings of faith were really designed to teach us dependence upon God, uh, complete dependence upon God. And, and yet, if, if we don't understand it right, you know, you, you'll see it the wrong way. And, and, and I've been teaching faith for 40 years. Uh, I'm 41 years this month. And I'm thinking, you know, we got to dig into it. So, like I said, the best place for me to start digging around and stuff and meddling is uh, with the crew on Wednesday night. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, let's get into this. If you would, go to Romans chapter 4. And this is, it's, it's, uh, it's all about dependence on God. I went and looked at Genesis 14 today and saw that whole deal with Abraham uh, and Abram and Melchizedek and how he showed up and all that. The whole thing was a foreshadowing of dependence upon God. They bought the bread and the wine, which represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. It was all about and has always been about total dependence upon Christ. So I'm thinking since we hit this bedrock, then, you know, that's not always been true in our Christian life. We have been involved in a lot of self-effort and self-will, and we really got to identify those things to really just trust God and to, to look at God and what he's trying to do. So join me tonight. This is going to really be a fascinating teaching. Romans chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. Let's look at it in the King James and then the New Living Translations. Now, I, in order to really understand how faith uh, uh, teaches us dependence upon God, we have to bring a lot of clarity uh, to the word of faith. We've got to bring... Uh, some clear explanation of faith. And I think the clearest explanation of faith is found in Romans chapter 4, 18. All right? And I, I know we've heard a lot about it, and I'm not here to be, you know, the, you know, the religious police or, you know, uplift one and tell that. Not, 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 I'm just teaching the Word, okay? So don't, don't think I'm talking about nobody. I ain't got nobody in my head right now but Jesus, all right? I'm just teaching the Word, all right? All right, so Romans chapter 4, 18, here's the clearest explanation of the word of, of, the, of the word of faith. Romans 4, 18, and I'm going to read 4, 18 through 21. 
He said, against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. Now, I'm going to go back and read this again once we define faith. But being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And then, and being fully persuaded, here's, here, here, here's dependence, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised that God was able also to perform. All right, can you not see very clearly that verse 21 is Abraham saying, even with all of these promises, God made the promise, and God's going to have to perform the promise. You don't see anything uh, there that talks about any expectations from you. All of the expectations is God made the promise. What he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now, you know this whole story was about Abraham and, 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 and Abram and, and Sarah and how God said you were going to have a, a child and, and, and both of them are old, I mean, a child at 190, and, and, and he said, I made the promise. And there's, there's, there's no way they could take any credit for anything. There's, there's, I mean, this, this is why God's wisdom is, needs to be trusted. That you're going to see God's power because they don't have no power to do nothing, okay? If the baby is to be born, if there's conception, it's all God. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that in your life where you were in a situation, there is nothing you can do. And the world tries to convince you that, well, it, it just can't be done. No. God wants to put you in a situation when it looks hopeless. You do like Abraham and hope against hope. Why? Because he's the one that made the promise, and he's the one that's able to also perform the promise. There is complete dependence on God, total dependence upon God. So Abraham was strong in faith because he was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able also to perform. He was strong in faith. Look at verse 20. He was strong in faith because he was fully persuaded, persuaded that what God had promised, he was all, also able to perform. And in doing this, he gave the glory to God. When you live a life in complete dependence on God, just by living that way, you give the glory to God. God gets the glory because you have decided, I am li living in complete dependence upon God. When heaven sees that you are living in complete dependence upon God, heaven receives the glory from a life that is being lived in total trust and complete dependence upon God. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Now, so what I decided to do is let's dig around this thing a little bit here. Let's look at Genesis 18. Verse 9 through 10, and then verse 14. Genesis 18, verse 9 through 10 and 14. I mean, is this the first time, you know, that this happened? We, Abraham's a perfect illustration. So, I mean, you, you have to pay attention to it because it's very clear what faith was in Abraham's eye. Faith is completely dependent upon God. That, that's the only thing it can be. What, what else in that, those verses of Scripture do you see? See, See, here's what, here's, go back to Romans 4. <laughs> go back to Romans 4, 18. Somebody says, well, Abraham had a lot of faith. See, that's why he got pregnant. No, it is true that he had a lot of faith. Absolutely, yes. But what does that mean? It's like we're trying to give him the credit for her, her getting pregnant. And, and he couldn't because he couldn't do nothing. Even what he did that night was God. <laughs> Eggs was dead, sperm was non-existence. All of it was God. All right? All right now, now watch this. Who against hope believed in hope? Uh, that he might become the father of many nations, so shall his seed be, verse uh, 19. 
uh, and being not weak in depending on God. And being not weak in depending on God, he considered not his own body now dead. Now, most people in that situation would be weak in depending on God because their body is dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in depending on God. And because he was strong in depending on God, he was giving glory to God. Y'all follow me? 21, and he sums it up. And being fully persuaded that he had, he had pr what he had promised, he was also able also to perform it because Abraham, what, is, what was Abraham's part? He completely depended on God. That was it. And so that says to me that when everything looks weird and it's not going to happen and you're facing impossible situations or the world says it's hopeless, what we have, the advantage we have, which they will kind of diminish that, that uh, thing, the advantage we have is we depend on God. We're not dependent on what the world's dependent on. We depend on God. Don't let me find a promise because he's got to be the one responsible for performing it. I don't perform the promise. He does. Glory be to God. I don't perform the promise by, well, I'm going to make this confession 20 times a day, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm not against none of that. That's just teaching you how to talk right so you can stay focused on it. But do not take the credit for what you are not responsible for. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, go to uh, Genesis 18. Uh, verse 9 through 10 and then verse 14. I, I depend on God. And, and, and like I said Sunday, start practicing this. Start training in this. Every day, get up, you know, several times a day. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God today. I totally depend on him. Several times a day, uh, you know, my life is a life that completely uh, relies on Jesus. I rely on Jesus. And you're training yourself to never rely on you. You're training yourself to totally rely on him. And then he begins to get involved and talk to you and lead and guide you and all that. Now watch this. Uh, this is so cool, verse 9. And uh, they said unto him, where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, behold, she's in the tent. And he said, I will, certainly I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Somebody say set time. set time. See, when you're depending on God, don't come giving him a time. It ain't a microwave. Boo, boo, I need this in five seconds. When you're depending on God, there's a time for it. And some people are get disappointed because it doesn't come with the time that they want it. Yeah. He says, but according to the, uh, the time of life, he says, and lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Ain't no use of y'all going and getting no, no checking to see what it is. She's going to have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. She heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. She kind of laughed a little bit and then tried to deny it. But look at verse, look at, uh, verse 14. He says, is anything too hard for God? Go ahead and answer that. No. At the time appointed, there it is again. I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Now, it's, up, it's not up to me to make this happen. I'm depending on him. I'm relying on him, and it's going to happen when he wanted it to happen. I don't decide I'm going to depend on God for five days, and if it doesn't happen after five days, I'm going to stop depending on God. That's not what this is. All right, now, let's see him perform it in Genesis 21, 1 and 2. Genesis 21, and then verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived... And bear Abraham a son in his old age at the what? Set time of which God has spoken to him. Now let me, let me, let me go to this thing. I, I kept noticing this. I'm, I, I know so many people, you know, I'm putting my faith out there and I'm doing that and I'm doing that, and they become weak independent on God because they set a time. 
I don't do that no more. I used to do it, and it was painful, and, and, and it hurt, and it was disappointing. Yeah. I will not put God on a schedule. Thank you. I am not going to do it. What I am going to do is live a life depending on Him. And so when it happens, it's like, praise God. I depended on God for that to happen. Amen? And during that process of depending on God, I also depend on His wisdom. The wisdom of God may deny something I wanted. Doesn't mean I'm a bad Christian. Doesn't mean I got sin in my life. His wisdom, I have come to trust as much as his power. So we got, we got to change this weird thing we got going on, like God is a genie, and we can rub the lamp and, and set the time and say, all right, Lord, I need to be healed at this time. I need you to do it this way, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And then when it doesn't happen, then y'all get around in the little Christian circles and say, well, you just didn't have enough faith. And now you're condemned, and now you got church hurt. Now you're mad at everybody. You're mad at me, and I didn't even know y'all was going through all that stuff. Okay? There's a set time. But I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you about making a decision to depend on God. I depend on God. I'm making a decision to live my life depending on God. I'm, I'm living my life relying on Jesus. I'm re li living my life trusting God and, and believing, believing God. Um, Tails, do me a favor. You and Maya, come here. Just, I want to do an il illustration. Come here, baby. I want to use you for a minute. Yeah, you. <laughs> okay, turn around. All right, now, do you trust your dad? Yeah. You do? Okay, now, uh, he's gonna, you're going to fall back, and he's going to catch you. Do you trust that he can catch you? All right. And do you even, you, are you worried about him catching you? What? <laughs> okay, ready? All right, we're going to, de you, you depend on him to, to not, he, you're depending on him to make sure you don't hit the floor, right? Yes. Okay, all right, go ahead and fall. Wow. All right, now, are you pretty comfortable with that? All right, now, just fall whenever you want to. Yeah. All right, now, this time when you fall, say, wait, say that now. <laughs> don't worry about it, just fall. <laughs> You trust him, right? You really trust him, right? He will not let you hit the ground. You're depending on him, right? Go ahead and do it again. Let's see. Every time, you depend on him to do that, right? Do it two more times. Bam, come on. One more time. What's that out now? There, you see that? <laughs> this is the picture of us with our Father. I depend on him to keep me when I'm falling. I depend on him to take care of me when I'm broke. I depend on him to help me when something has touched my body. I depend on him to take care of me. I, I, and and it's, not, it's not, you know, some, some little weird thing. It's I live a life depending on him. How long are you going to depend on your daddy? Thank you. Forever. That's what faith, the life of faith is. It's that decision. It's that decision. I don't know how to make it that simple. And it feels like it's been so complicated. And it feels like it's been so complicated and self-infiltrated. I was, then things happened, I, 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 I condemned myself. I beat myself up. It's not my fault. I wasn't praying enough. I didn't have enough faith. I didn't. And I, I didn't know it was just simply dependent on God. I didn't know that there was a set time. I didn't know that I need to take God off the time clock. I didn't know I didn't need to be comparing myself amongst myself. The Bible says that's not any good. And it's weird because we got the entire body of Christ, and I don't think they really know what the life of faith is all about. Amen? Amen. How many of you have ever been strong and dependent on God in something that has yet to manifest. Amen. So are you going to stop because it has yet to manifest? No. I'm not. I'm not because my whole life is about depending on him. Yeah. My whole life is about depending on him. And every now and then, there's some tests that will come your way, if need be, oh, yeah. to let you know his grace is sufficient. Yeah. 
while you're dependent on him, he said, I got you. While you're dependent on him, there'll be, there'll be little things that'll happen just to let you know God's like, I see you. I got you. I already took care of that. He knows what to do. Oh, my God. So I want to look at this set time just for a moment. A couple places I found. Look at Psalms 102 and 13. Psalms 102 and 13. And then just a, just a couple of things. Don't let the timing of a thing cause you to become weak and dependent on God. Okay, I was talking to one of my spiritual sons last week, and he was just like, you know, how do you get these things? How do you get that to happen? How do you get that building? How do you get those members? I said, I think you got it all wrong. I said, what you do is you commit to a vision, and the vision will draw all the provision. I said, your problem is you're trying to get all the provision because, you know, that's pretty clear to people that you're blessed because they see all the trimmings. No, 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 no. You got the vision, and God will only attract what the vision needs. Don't try to get what you see another minister have. Your vision will attract what you need for your assignment. <laughs> I said, so quit seeking provision. And look at the word provision. Take vision out, and you just got pro. Pro what? Pro nothing. You got vision first, vision first. And a lot of this time that you're waiting on stuff, you can build vision. You can build vision on the inside of you. Look what he says here. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time, watch this, is come. The set time to favor you in this age of grace has come. There's a timing even in the favor. And then there may be some favor in your life uh, that hadn't come yet. But, you know, there's a set time for favor to happen. There's a set time for certain things to happen in your, in your life. You know, uh, when I was in Uganda a few years ago, I don't know how long it's been. It's been a minute. And there were 100,000 people in the stadium. I've never preached to 100,000 people in the stadium before. I was... In fact, I didn't know they were there for me. I looked out the window and I said, excuse me, who, who, why, uh, was there a concert or something here today before I came? He, they said, no, no concert. I said, well, what, what are all these people doing here? They said, oh, they're all here to hear you, Pastor. I'm like, ooh, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I, I wasn't ready for that until, that until I was ready for that. I wasn't ready for that until I was ready for that, okay? God knows when a certain thing needs to happen. And then there were certain things that happened in my life I still wasn't ready for. I, I, I wish I hadn't had, had another opportunity to do it, and God's given me another opportunity, but sometimes you rush stuff. You, sometimes you think you're ready for something, and you're really not. Because God wants to get your character and everything so, so you can handle it so it won't handle you. Some people are being handled by their so-called answered prayers. You ain't ready yet. You, you need, we need to learn humility. You know what humility is? You know, you're not... You know how humility is perfectly demonstrated? It's demonstrated in the life of an individual who has committed itself to complete dependence upon God. That's all humility is. I am completely dependent upon God. So now you see why you have to have a relationship. Now you see where Christianity is not just showing up at church and playing church and doing church games. Christianity is a personal relationship between you and the Father where you're completely dependent on Him and you have a relationship with him no matter what they're doing at church. You have a relationship with him on the way home. You have a relationship with him at the house. You have a relationship with him on the job. You have a personal relationship with God. That's who you depend on. And he will never let you down. He will never let you down. Look at Esther uh, chapter 2 and verse 15. At Esther 2, 15. Um, it just simply says here, I'm not going to read the whole thing. He says, and when the time, when the time, when the turn of Esther came, when the turn of Esther came, that just simply says there's timing there. Uh, say this out loud. My turn is coming. My turn is coming. My, I'm not weak in depending on God. My turn is coming. There's never any need for you to look at somebody like, well, why you bless them and then bless me? No, my turn is coming. 
And every time you know somebody and they're getting blessed, you ought to just shout and say, the line is moving. The line is moving, praise God. My turn, say, ah, my turn is coming. Amen. I felt something on that thing a little bit. My turn is coming, praise the Lord. I don't know what you're believing for. I don't know what you're depending on God for. I don't know what you're relying on Jesus every day. Some people are just relying on Jesus to, you know, to live a pain-free life for a day. And he comes through. Some people are relying on Jesus just to, to protect him throughout that day. There are lots of opportunities for people to come on. Thank you, God, for what you did for me today. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm, I thank you for protecting my children today. Don't forget to count your blessings. While you're waiting on the big something, there, there are blessings happening every day in your life. So keep depending on him. Your turn is coming. I can sense that right now, boy. The line, the line just got to move just like that, boy. Aren't you glad you're not in a line that just stands still, amen? amen. This line moving just like this, boy. My turn coming, my turn next, next, next. Because we're living on life depending on God. My turn is coming, praise God. Amen. And then, and then Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Uh, I want you to, he says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. That's amazing to me. There's a time for every purpose under the heaven. See, I believe that you're being set up for a set time. See, all the stuff that you might be going through now is just a setup for a set time. Oh, my God, say that. Say, say I'm being set up for a set time. And a lot of people just think the set time is going to come without a setup. And, and, and some of the very stuff that you're tempted to complain about might be a setup for a set time. But I don't believe you're going to see the set time without seeing the setup. And you're being set up right now. You're being set up right now. Somebody says, well, you know, I, I'm not making as much money as I used to. You're being set up right now. Why? Because you're living a life in total dependence and complete dependence upon God. That is always going to be the key. You're living a life in complete and total dependence upon God. Now, I said all that to say this, that Abraham's faith was a dependence upon God to fulfill his promises. Abraham's faith was a dependence upon God to fulfill the promise. Now, I want to go through some real familiar scripture, not to beat up the stuff that you've uh, learned, but maybe just to reconsider how do you put in what I'm talking about tonight. For example, Mark 11, 22 and 23. Mark 11, 22 and 23. And I can... I can see this, but I want, you to, I want you to be careful not to go that way with it. Uh, Jesus uh, had cursed a fig tree on his way in, and when they came back, they saw that the fig tree uh, was withered. And, th and they remembered that Jesus said, no man should eat fruit of this tree hereafter because he saw a fig tree afar off and it had leaves on it. And any time it has leaves on it, it should have figs on it. But when he got close to it, there were no figs on it. So he says, well, no man will eat fruit of thee hereafter. And when they came back approximately 24 hours, the tree had dried up from its roots. And uh, the disciples wanted to know, all right, how did this happen? Uh, tell us how to do this. And Jesus answering, verse 22, saith unto them, have faith in God, or have complete dependence in God. That's, that's how I look at it now. Have complete dependence in God. All right, now, there is another trans translation. I believe it's the Moffat translation that says, have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God or have the faith like God. Okay, so here's the deal. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. It's like, okay, well, have the faith like God. But then Galatians says that we we no longer live by our faith, we live by the faith of Jesus Christ. Now I'm trying to show you, you got to rightly divide this because here's what it'll do. It goes from having faith in God to, wait a minute, I've got 
uh, the God kind of faith, and then look at verse 23. He says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And now all of a sudden, you have now kind of crowned yourself as the one that now has this thing to do this. And I, oh, now I'm going to say it, and now I'm going to believe it, and now I'm going to bring it to pass. It's like you forgot everything that... that uh, Nothing happens without you depending on God. Amen. Nothing. Oh, yeah, I can say with my mouth and believe in my heart and speak to mountains, but I know that it is only because of my dependence on him and not my, and not my dependence on me. I'm trying to make this distinction because I think somewhere, on, a lot, somewhere in this, it kind of gave us a license to start depending on ourselves more than we depend on God, and then we spent more time saying, I speak to this mountain, I speak to this mountain, I believe, I believe, I believe, I speak to this mountain, I speak to this mountain, and I'm thinking, whoa, what are you doing? I've seen people do that. I used to do that. I'm like, this is the formula now to release my faith. Does everybody understand? I'm not trying to dog this out. I'm trying to say, all of this is true, but you can't forget about the, 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 the weightier matter here. And so the weightier matter here, if you look at John 15, and hold your place there, I'll go back there in a moment. John 15, 5 and 8. I'm just trying to make this one point. The life of faith should not be self-sufficient and performance based on what you do. It's about who you depend on. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus, the one who just spoke to the fig tree. He says, I am the vine. He said, you are the branches. Okay, so that's another issue. We, we are branches. We don't make no fruit. We, we just, the fruit just comes through us. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth much fruit. For without me... You can do nothing. So imagine you saying it with your mouth and believing it in your heart, but you don't think you need to be with him. He says, you can't do nothing. And I've seen so many Christians fail, leave the church, because they did this and nothing happened because they put more emphasis on the mechanics and divorced the essence of the relationship. Did you hear what I just said? Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they're burned. You know what he says? You're not useless. You're doing things without depending on him. How do we get there? Abraham says, I depend on God for everything. We say, I depend on my faith. It's weird now. I ain't trying to start no fight. <laughs> if a man abide not in me, he is cast not, he's, he's cast in fire and burn. Look at the next verse, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. Why? Because you depend on me. And when you open your mouth, you're doing that because you depend on me. And when you believe in your heart, you do that because you're dependent on me. And ultimately, the mountain being removed and ultimately the fruit that you're bearing comes because you're dependent on him. I'm speaking to the mountain dependent on God. I'm believing in my heart dependent on God. I'm, 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 I'm allowing his word to come into me and I'm because I depend on God. He says, you can ask what you will and it shall be done in you because you depend on God and when you ask. The bottom line, the foundation of all of the faith release is founded on the foundation of complete dependence on God. If it ever moves from dependent on God to dependent on you, all right, now watch this. If it ever moves from, Abraham says, he made the promise, he'll perform it. Now, you say, 
He made the promise, I'll perform it. You're going to be like these branches in a pile. <laughs> and that's what's happening with people. We're like, we're trying to... See, I tell you, the most of the time, I don't pray about what to preach. I pray most of the time about how to say it. I pray, I pray for articulation. How do I... Now, maybe next month I'll be able to articulate this better. But this is Wednesday night crew Bible study. Y'all know we go through stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out how to say what I say, and then by the time I get up Sunday, I say, who that Wednesday night? All right, I got a better way to say this now. <laughs> but y'all have to bear with me on Wednesday night because I'm, I'm, I'm getting it out there. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm spitting it out there, and y'all listening. Some of you got it. Some of you confused. Some of you wonder why we even talking about this. <laughs> because I don't want anything to fall to the ground dead. Amen. Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. And you know how you glorify God? By depending on Him. And when you depend on Him, you're going to bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciple. You see that? Verse 9. Herein is, uh, verse 9. He says, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And that's another thing you can't forget about. My faith resides in the love of God. My faith I say unto the mountain, be thou removed, and believe in my heart, because I depend on God, and I know this is going to happen because he loves me. Amen. You see, all this stuff, all of this, this is relational. This is not going and try to find the secret formula to how to get paid by Friday. Why do you keep saying that? Why do you keep going around talking about the Lord going to help give me my bag by Friday? The Lord going to give me my bag by Friday. The Lord going to give me my bag by Friday. Itororobo shadara bag. Iririririr barara baba bag. Bra bag, bra bag. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. See, that, that's, that's self-effort. You're, you're performing to try to get something to happen, and you're going to be like them branches. You're going to be firewood. Y'all laughing because... We have all done that like that. <laughs> Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 13. I'm just saying it's, it's all of the stuff that I've read so far is true, but in relationship, this has all got to come together. See, you can tell when you're around real religious church folks, they want to get you on every turn. Yeah, but the Bible says this. Yeah, that, that can't be right because the Bible said that. You just got out the water. You dripping water on the carpet. You're trying to correct somebody. Girl, shut up and get to know who Jesus is. <laughs> Talking about the Lord told me. I said, well, I asked the Lord, did he know you? He said, he, know, he, know, he don't even know who you are. <laughs> I told my grandson that. He said, he said the Lord told, me, uh, told, told him something. And I said, yeah, that's interesting. He said, what? I said, I was praying for you this morning. He said, he didn't know who you were. He said, no, it didn't. I said, no, seriously. He said, he had no idea who you are. <laughs> I said, you got, you got to get to know him. You, well, he knows the hairs on my head. No, he knows the hair on my head. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting in on my coattail? <laughs> well, Pops, you said all I had to do is get born again. You're right. Are you? <laughs> um... Kinda, you ain't getting in. Because when you say, you, you, you ain't no kind of say. Amen. <laughs> anyway, whatever. All right, watch this. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, watch this, I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore we speak. You know the number of people that are speaking but don't even believe what they say? I believe. What do I believe? I believe that God loves me, first of all. Amen. What do I believe? I believe that if he made the promise, he's able to perform it. Look at the things we got to believe before you go to Mark 11 and start lecturing me on what faith is and how it works. Whew. Trying to figure out when is it going to be safe for me to... to uh, preach this out outside the church because this year is man slap year. <laughs> men are slapping men this year all over the place. <laughs> ain't that say to be slapped right, right now. I ain't, I ain't that say. 
because I'd be on duck and gave you a reason to not do that no more. <laughs> Come walking over. So anybody I see walking down, you know, you used to think they're walking down to ask for prayer now. They go walking down, I'll be like, Seriously, that happened to me one time. I was in Scotland, and um, they, they had, had this thing on the news about Creflo Dollar coming to Scotland, and we're not going to let it happen and all that stuff. So we didn't know what was going to happen. So Greg Poe flew over, came in with his hat on. like He was like, SWAT. I'm like, what are you going to do, beat somebody up if they come here? He said, no, I got it, I got it. So everything was cool the first couple of uh, places we went to. And then on that Sunday, we were in this big auditorium, and some guy had gotten behind the stage. And, and I was up there preaching, and he came out, you know, just walking real fast. You know, Creflo Dollar, we do not receive. And so out the corner of my eye, I'm thinking, so I know he don't think I'm just going to, like, stand here and let him hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm thinking, well, you know, everybody's camera and everything's out, and I'm thinking, like, but if I hit him before he hit me and it go viral, preacher, preacher assaults, man who was just asking for prayer, I'm in a dilemma, but he's getting closer. And I'm thinking, something need to happen, because this is, so I'm thinking about stiff arm. Just, if he just come out, just stiff arm. And if he keep coming, I got to do that collar Paul thing, boy, you know, we got. But praise God, it didn't happen. You know, one of our guys leaped up on the stage. He stepped on them back the other way. They stepped on them all into handcuffs and took them to jail. And I'm thinking, like, this is crazy. We're living in that kind of crazy world right now. Now, I have no idea why I'm talking about this, but um, <laughs> I'm sure there was a point. Was there a point? Huh? Yeah, it's a good story. It's just, yeah, that's, yeah, that's all it was. It was just a good story. Um, anyway, uh, faith in God then, <laughs> oh, dependent on God. There are lots of things you can depend on God in. I mean, it, nothing I did would have been the right move. You just trust God. God will take care of you. He's got people surrounding you who are anointed to take care of you. And you just, I just trust God. I just trust God that we've been in some very rough places, but uh, he's, already, he's always taking care of us. Always taking care of us. And it's just been a blessing of the Lord to, to, to depend on him. I have to depend on him. I mean... Engine goes out over the Pacific Ocean. I, I trust God. I just have to depend on him. What else am I going to do? What am I going to do? Go in the back, put my Superman suit on, <laughs> jump out the back, and then fly the plane to the place. And then... Every one of you will be put in a situation where there's no other choice. You're going to have the fill in the blank, not the multiple choice. And the answer's got to be, Lord, we depend on you. So here's how I define faith for us to study. Faith in God is complete dependence upon God. And when you depend on God, it's an emptying of yourself. You empty yourself out. No self-will, no self-confidence, no self-effort. There's got to be something wrong with a life of faith that is full of self. And that's how I judge this. I'm thinking, Lord, I, I lived faith in a lot of cases full of me, trusting in how many times I could do this a day and trusting in all of the stuff that I could do and all the stuff I could say. But this faith life should be empty of self. And if you find that there's self-performance there, and self-confidence there, and self-will, all those things, you are not living the life 
of complete dependence upon God. And I can say it this way. You are not living godly. Because godliness is a life that is empty of self and in total complete submission to him. And that's what we've got to begin to train in. Train in our dependence on God. So faith is more than just trusting God to do things, ask of him. It is trusting him to do whatever he in his infinite wisdom knows to be the best, even if it is a denial of the thing that we ask. That's okay. It's okay that I ask for something and he, and it, 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 you know, somebody says, well, it could be a delay. It could be a delay and it could be a denial, but I'm still going to trust that he knows what is best for me. Dependence upon God's wisdom is as important as dependent upon God's power. I depend on God's power to give me what I ask. I depend on God's power to, to heal me when I ask. I depend on God's power to bring to pass all those things that he's made available. I depend on that. But if it doesn't happen, I depend on his wisdom just as much as I depend on his power. He knows what's best for me. See, you can't do this without a relationship with him. He, he knows what's best for me. And so rather than me be walking around disappointed and I don't want to talk to God and I ain't coming to church no more because he didn't do what I asked. He's not some genie in the lamp. He's supposed to be your heavenly father, your friend, somebody you have a relationship with. And I'm, I'm good with that. I've, I've got myself to a point where I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't, denials don't bother me. Delays don't bother me. I trust you. I, I have to trust that you, there's one thing I know that you can't back off of, and that is your unrestricted, infinite love for me. And I know you love me. And if something was denied, I know you love me enough to know that was the best for me. Yeah. If something was delayed, I know you love me enough to make that decision that was best for me. So I've never really focused in on my um, confidence and trust in his wisdom. I just mostly did it depending on his power to, to give me the thing that I needed and I wanted. And now I see this thing is so, it's so much bigger than what I thought it was. It's this gigantic life full of all these different pieces and God's like the master overseer of all of it. And he knows exactly where I need to be so that I can have impact in the call and the anointing that he put on my life for it to have. So I, I trust that. I'm good with that. Well, I'm going to get to, to know everybody. You don't need to know everybody. You don't need, everybody don't need to be in your circle. Some of y'all need to reduce the amount of people you got in your hole as a holy. You got too many people in your hole as a holy. That's why all your business is in the street, because you got too many people in your hole as a holy. Well, I got 50 best friends. You in trouble. Uh-uh. That's too many people. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with your saying, you know, you already have so many people in your life. Somebody says, oh, I want to be a part of your life. Just tell them I ain't got space. Well, I, 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 I think that was mean. I'm, I'm, see, I don't have space. You busy going around trying to appease everybody, and now you don't, you don't even have nothing to say to God no more. Wow. You have no relationship with God because you're trying to have a relationship with everybody else. I ain't doing that. I'm good, y'all. ain't got nothing left to do until Jesus come back but preach this gospel of grace. And I tell you, the most freeing thing in the world is to be completely delivered from people and delivered to depending on God for everything in your life. I suggest you work on that and get it where it needs to be. Amen? God loves us great. That's all I got to say. My time is up. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Yes. Father, we do thank you and we give you praise for your word. Help us to, to work all this out. And uh, we're dependent on you that, you know, 
that we'll begin to understand how to live a life of complete dependence upon you. I pray the blessings of God be upon those who are here live and those who are on the stream tonight, that they, they, they get so hungry and thirsty for a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that we know that you're going to take care of us because you love us. You love us with a, 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 a never-ending, undying love. Your love is without restrictions. Your justice has been satisfied, and you're just amazing, especially for those who depend on you, and we depend on you. Blessings upon them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So at this time, if you're not born again, and the number of people who've gotten born again since January, it's like blowing my mind, the people that are getting saved. And we're going to continue to do this. So if you're at home or on the stream or if you're here live and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, just simply pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of all my sins. I make you the Lord of my life. And I receive the free gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Save me. So right now, by faith, I declare that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. That simple prayer puts you in the family of God forever, man. That's an awesome thing. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me tonight, uh, I want you to text the keywords, I'm saved, to... 515555 and then provide your name and email address and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. If you prayed that prayer here, we want to congratulate you. You are in the family of God. If you were to die today, you'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and um, complete our final act of worship through the giving of gifts tonight. If you need an offering envelope in the chapel here tonight, if you'll lift your hands up, the ushers will get one to you. Uh, if you're giving through the use of your phones or technology that you have, uh, QR code uh, will go on the screen and you can hit that and it'll take you straight to text to give. And if you're at home, the four ways of giving is on the screen and you can go ahead and follow those instructions as well. It is always an honor and a privilege to come and to be a part of teaching the Word of God, the Word of Grace, that will just enhance your relationship with Jesus Christ, remove the condemnation, the shame, the guilt, and to let you know that you are in relationship with a God who loves you so extraordinarily. And uh, it's a good thing to know that, that he really does. He really, really does. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Somebody come on up, and I'm going to let you come on up and do your thing. And, and uh, I'll see you guys on Sunday. God bless you. You asked and we answered. We know there are friends of the ministry who prefer CDs and DVDs. But for those of you who find the digital versions of messages better fit your life, Creflo and Taffy Dollars message series are now available as digital downloads in the CYWE store. Log on to CYWEstore.com today to see the whole catalog of new and re-release messages that can be downloaded to any device for easy and convenient listening.